good morning or good afternoon. This has been a 60-year battle to make voting more accessible, more available to Americans across the country. And uh, our effort, the President's effort, uh, to uh, continue that fight doesn't stop tomorrow uh, at all. Uh, this will be a fight of his presidency. Uh, in terms of the steps he's taken, he's had conversations, obviously, with members about supporting this legislation, including Senator Manchin, as you all know, uh, over the last couple of weeks. Um, and he will continue to advocate. He's also asked his vice president, or agreed with his vice president, that she will be in charge of this effort moving forward. It doesn't stop. This is an important piece of it, the federal legislation. More work to be done, uh, but it doesn't stop with that. There's work to do in the states. There's work to do with voting groups. There's work to do uh, to empower and engage legislatures, and uh, that's something that will also be part of her effort. Uh, and as it relates to the filibuster, uh, you know, I, I don't think you have to take it from us. That would be Congress moving forward or making a decision. Uh, if the vote is unsuccessful to tomorrow, uh, it will, I, we suspect it will prompt a new conversation about the path forward, and we'll see where that goes. How does the President view his role in these negotiations? Is he the closer? Is he the facilitator? Like, what's his approach this week to try and get this across the finish line? I feel like there's a baseball analogy here I won't really want to deliver on, so my husband thinks I'm cool, but I can't think of it. Uh, He'll be deeply involved and engaged in these uh, negotiations over the coming days. And some progressives have made the ask that if you're going to move forward with this bipartisan package, moderate senators commit to them to supporting the reconciliation piece of this as well, the second track, if you will. Will the president also seek that commitment from the moderates if they do move forward on a bipartisan piece of legislation? Well, I, I would say that the president sees this as a process that is uh, has multiple paths forward. Do you support the Manchin language? on the voting rights issue. He certainly is uh, appreciative of the efforts by Senator Manchin and others uh, to uh, continue to make progress uh, on voting rights, which he feels is a huge priority. Go ahead. Can you describe what safeguards the administration has in place to make sure that the children of top officials don't get preferential treatment in hiring? Sure. Uh, well, let me say first that uh, we have the highest ethical standards of any administration in history. A number of ethics officials have conveyed that, um, and we're proud of that. We have also uh, staffed up at an unprecedented pace, and that, and this is the most diverse administration in American history. So we certainly expect that everyone will abide by those high th ethics standards. That applies in how we operate. It also applies in how hiring is done. Go ahead, Peter. Thank you, Jen. On COVID-19 origins, Jake Sullivan said this week that if China does not let investigators probing the COVID origins in, they're going to face isolation in the international community. So what is an example of something that the White House thinks China would care about being isolated from? Well, uh, China wants to have a role in the global community and global conversations, and, and certainly they would take note of that. And so the White House's position would be that isolation from the international community is more of a, a deterrent uh, than, say, sanctions and threatening sanctions or some other form of punishment. I think the point that Jake was making is that China wants to be seen as a power in the world, as a central actor in the world, and uh, they they are not looking to have the global community align against them. It's I'm just here to get you the accurate info. Thank you very much. Uh, go ahead. Thanks. I think there's a fly on your head. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, guys. At least it's not a cicada, I swear. Those things are... Okay, but I, I do have actual questions. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it. I was like, is there breaking news? But she's, yeah, there you go, okay. So, I, I mean, you're talking about uh, the voting rights vote, there's supposed yeah. to be a, a test vote tomorrow, that is expected to fail. When you look at, right now, the, the prospect for voting rights is not very high to get something through Congress as things stand right now. So what I would like to know is if you can say specifically what the White House plans to do if you cannot get something, some type of federal action. I know you said that there are a lot of other things. You look at this as the beginning of the process, mm -hmm. but ultimately on an issue as fundamental as voting rights, if you cannot get federal action, what is left for the White House to do? 
Well, I don't think we you accept that. Conversation. Does, that means a conversation on the filibuster, I, I would think, because like you said, there's not the 10 votes in the Senate. And that being the case, what do you expect that conversation to look like? Are you having conversations with Senator Manchin and others about possibly making changes to the filibuster, at least when it comes to voting rights, if anything is going to get done in Congress? Uh, Democrats, we suspect and hope, will be united in making voting more accessible uh, for people across the country, making sure we're advocating for it as a fundamental right. Uh, this is an opportunity for Republicans to stand up and do the same. Shouldn't be a partisan issue. Go ahead. Oh, thank you, Jen. If you could sp speak specifically to the administration's position on allowing or requiring some form of voting ID when people go to the polls. I think the president's looking, I'm not going to go through different individual pieces of the package. It's a compromise. Um, the president, uh, there are components of there, of course, that I think universally among most Democrats in the country, an extension of early voting, uh, making election day a law, we would support. Um, this is a, uh, a step forward, uh, should be seen as an incremental step forward. Uh, we'll see what's the next step in Congress. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um Sorry about that. Um, oh, it's okay. Two questions. So, okay, two qu two questions. Uh, the first on uh, governors and governors' races uh, across the country. Uh, you've been you have uh, a number of governors and candidates for governor who are uh, becoming more and more explicitly anti-government in in their rhetoric and rejecting the legitimacy of either the president or the federal government in general uh, in areas that are undoubtedly the federal government's uh, province, such as a Texas gubernatorial candidate saying he would close the borders. You have the guy in uh, Idaho running for governor who has actually taken up arms against federal agents. Uh, is the administration concerned that actual uh, violent extremists and people espousing secessionist rhetoric are finding a home uh, in Republican primaries and could actually be elected to office? And then I have that second question. Well, I'm not going to label people domestic violent extremists officially from here. Uh, I think we have certainly seen problematic rhetoric, rhetoric, followers of QAnon and conspiracy theories who not just who don't just run but are elected to office. So there's already a record of that. Um, we'll continue to speak out against that, but uh, we will. Our our strategy at this point is continue to advocate for uh, how government can work for the American people. Uh, remind people uh, across the country that this president is going to govern for all Americans, not just one from one wing of a party or the other, uh, and that hopefully the effectiveness of that is something that can help us play a constructive role. And then a related follow-up, uh, President Biden's predecessor is going to return to his campaign style rallies in Ohio this coming weekend. Uh, has anyone from the administration reached out to Governor DeWine or anyone in Ohio's government about the possibility of violence uh, resulting from uh, his return to the trail? And is there any concern about uh, him going back out there and continuing to insist that the election is fraudulent uh, and that he actually won could result in people being hurt or killed? Obviously, we take um, the rhetoric of uh, uh, the the other the, the former guy, as we like to say, uh, quite seriously, uh, as everyone should. Uh, but I don't have any uh, readouts or, or calls with Governor DeWine. I will see if there's anything from our Homeland Security team to read out. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, the president has been criticized for giving Putin um, a list of 16 critical infrastructure targets uh, that's considered uh, off limits to cyber attacks. How did that idea come about? And um, why not tell Putin that everything inside of the United States is off limits? Well, first, I, I don't think it required the president providing a list to for President Putin or Russia to determine what is critical infrastructure in the United States. I know that has been part of the conspiracy response to his proposal. Why didn't um, he give Putin a list of targets inside of Russia that the United States would target if another cyber attack um, does take place in the United States? Because we don't preview our punches. Go ahead. One last question. Go ahead. Oh, go. One last question. Sure. Um, does the president believe that a 15-week-old unborn baby is a human being? Are you asking me if the president supports a woman's right to choose? He does. Go ahead. So I was wondering if you would tell us about the president's reaction. Some Senate Republicans are delaying confirmation of his o OPM nominee over fears that if confirmed, she would incorporate what they see as. Um, 
uh, detrimental critical race theory into federal directives. What is the White House's response to that delay? Uh, the President believes that uh, this is a qualified nominee, one the Senate should move forward uh, expeditiously uh, so that we can ensure we have a full team in place across the government to continue to work with Democrats and Republicans in Congress. Uh, you said that the White House issued a reaction to that. I don't believe that is the case. Um, what, was the President briefed on that decision? I, I thought we had. If not, I will get that to you and to this gentleman over here. Thanks, everyone, so much. Uh, we'll do this again tomorrow. Okay. Thank you.